For centuries, Europe has controlled its rivers with a network of more than 150,000 dams. Built from the early 20th century onwards, these structures represented the height of progress, powering industries, generating electricity, and managing floods. Yet this progress came with a steep environmental cost. Dams alter river flows, harm ecosystems, and pose risks to migratory fish. Now, as many dams age and turn into liabilities, Europe is seeing a shift. Countries are tearing down old dams, rejuvenating rivers long confined by concrete. The recent demolition of three dams on Finland's Holon River highlights this change. However, removing such massive structures involves significant engineering challenges and risks. How do engineers tackle the complex task of dismantling these giants and why? We are committed to releasing two videos a week. Like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more visionary builds. In 2023, Europe reached a milestone in river restoration by removing nearly 500 dams and other barriers, marking a 50% increase from the previous year. This concerted effort, led by countries like France, Spain, Sweden, and Denmark, aims to revive the natural flow of rivers long disrupted by human structures. France was at the forefront, eliminating 156 barriers, followed by Spain, Sweden, and Denmark. The United Kingdom also made significant strides by removing 36 barriers. These removals are part of a broader initiative by Dam Removal Europe, a coalition of environmental groups including WWF and the Nature Conservancy. They're driven by the urgent need to restore river ecosystems, which are vital for biodiversity and community safety. In Scotland, the unique geography of a steep gorge necessitated the manual removal of quarry weir, while in Finland, the dismantling of dams on the Hitolanjoki River reopened 54 kilometers of river to salmon, revitalizing a habitat blocked for over a century. Despite the progress, the effort to reconnect Europe's fragmented rivers faces challenges, including public opposition and legislative hurdles. The proposed EU nature restoration law seeks to reconnect 25,000 kilometers of river by 2030, but it's currently stalled due to last-minute lobbying. The need for a paradigm shift in river management is clear, as even small barriers can significantly impact river ecosystems. The urgency of these removals is compounded by climate change, which increases the risk of extreme rainfall and the potential collapse of aging river barriers. Last year, heavy rains led to the collapse of barriers in Norway, Northern Ireland, and Slovenia, and a dam burst in the Orsk region of Russia, highlighting the growing risks associated with outdated infrastructure. This transformative approach to river management is about more than just removing physical barriers. It's about rethinking our relationship with nature and ensuring the health and safety of ecosystems and communities alike. The Holand River in Finland, stretching 53 kilometers to Lake Ladoga, is home to the country's only remaining population of naturally landlocked salmon. For over a century, the river's ecosystem suffered due to dams like the Kangas Koski, Lanoski, and Rokosi. These barriers hindered the salmon's crucial migration to their upstream spawning grounds and disrupted the natural flow of the river. This not only affected the salmon, but also altered water levels, sediment transport, and fragmented habitats for other dependent species. In the late 1990s, the efforts began to remove smaller barriers on the Russian part of the river. The reappearance of salmon below the Kangaskoski Dam sparked a local campaign to restore the whole end's natural flow. After 10 years of legal battles, a major breakthrough occurred. The hydropower companies agreed to sell their dams and plants. This decision marked the beginning of Finland's most extensive river restoration project. From 2017 to 2019, all three aging hydropower plants were purchased, setting the stage for their removal in September 2021. This pivotal action aimed to rejuvenate the river's rapids and support the revival of its salmon population and other native species. The first chapter of this ecological transformation began with the demolition of the Kangaskoski Dam. This removal had an immediate positive impact on the river. Within just a few weeks, thrilling signs of recovery appeared as salmon nests dotted the reopened section of the river. A year later, in July 2022, the largest dam, Lenoski, was also dismantled. The story's final chapter focused on the Rokosi Dam, a four-meter-high barrier built in 1921 and the furthest upstream obstacle. In August 2023, a carefully planned four-month dismantling process began aimed at restoring the surrounding rapids. The project, costing approximately 750,000 euros, was supported by both public and private donors dedicated to ecological restoration. Although the removal of the Rakosi Dam coincided with the autumn 2023 salmon spawning season, making immediate observations difficult, the downstream results are highly promising. 
At the Kangaskoski site, surveys in September 23 revealed a remarkable density of over 200 salmon fry per 100 square meter area. Dismantling a dam is kind of like a massive construction project run in reverse, only the process is complicated further by the presence of a powerful river. Engineers treat each dam as a distinct challenge, considering factors like their structure's age, size, and the conditions of the surrounding landscape. Their main objective extends beyond merely breaking down concrete barriers. They also need to manage the large volume of sediment that's accumulated behind the dam over years or even decades. Let's visualize one approach to this complex task. Imagine heavy machinery, such as bulldozers, being used not for brute force, but for a controlled demolition. They strategically remove sections of the dam wall, allowing water to gradually escape. This stage release is crucial as it gives the downstream ecosystem time to adjust to the new flow of water. Simultaneously, the sediment that has been blocked behind the dam begins to move, slowly replenishing riverbeds and habitats downstream. However, this sediment poses its own challenges. It could be a mixed bag, rich in life-supporting nutrients or laden with potentially harmful pollutants. To address this, engineers meticulously sample the sediment to determine its composition. Understanding what's trapped behind the dam is vital for ensuring the health of the river ecosystem. Based on their findings, they can decide the safest and most effective method to redistribute or manage this sediment. Throughout the process, engineers must balance technical precision with ecological sensitivity. The removal must be executed in such a way that it minimizes disruption to both the river and its surrounding environment. This involves continuous monitoring of water quality and aquatic life, ensuring that the reintroduction of sediments doesn't lead to unintended consequences like algal blooms or the spread of toxins. As the project progresses, adaptive management strategies are often necessary. These might include adjusting the rate of demolition based on real-time environmental feedback or modifying the sediment management plan to address unforeseen issues. This adaptability is crucial as the goal is not only to remove a physical barrier, but also to restore a natural river system that supports a diverse range of life. Engineers employ a range of strategies to dismantle dams, each method tailored to specific conditions and priorities. Here's an overview of some common approaches. Notch and release approach. This method involves making strategic cuts or notches in the dam, similar to steps in a staircase. This allows water to drain out gradually and controlled, emulating a natural river flow. This slow release is crucial as it gives the river ecosystem time to adapt, allowing the previously trapped sediment to begin redistributing downstream and revitalizing habitats. This method requires patience, as draining the reservoir can take months, sometimes even a year. Iconic projects like the Elwha and Glen Canyon dam removals have successfully used this method, leading to significant ecological improvements. Rapid Release Approach For quicker results, engineers might opt for a rapid release method. This involves creating a large opening at the base of the dam, such as through blasting, which releases a torrent of water and sediment. This method is the quickest and usually the cheapest, but it comes with higher risks. The sudden surge of water can cause downstream flooding and erosion, potentially damaging riverside ecosystems. It's typically reserved for situations where the reservoir is small or where a large downstream river can absorb the extra volume without significant adverse effects. Dig and Dewater Approach In cases where the sediment trap behind the dam contains contaminants, a more extensive intervention might be necessary. This approach involves first draining the reservoir completely to expose the sediment. Then, heavy machinery such as excavators and dump trucks are used to carefully remove and safely dispose of the sediment. This method is labor-intensive and costly, but often necessary to prevent harmful substances from affecting the downstream river environment. Retain Sediment Approach Sometimes, moving large amounts of sediment is too expensive or logistically impractical. In such cases, engineers might choose to stabilize and retain the sediments in place. This involves reinforcing the remaining structure and implementing erosion control measures to ensure that the sediment does not move unexpectedly. This method is considered when the cost of removing the sediment outweighs the potential benefits of doing so. In some cases, engineers can reroute a river around a dam by creating a new channel. This method leaves the sediment in place and is particularly useful in remote areas where moving large amounts of material would be too costly. Removing dams is expensive, so careful planning is essential. Often, removing smaller or simpler dams offers the best ecological value for the money. Take the recent on Francis Saloon River. For example, engineers took down two large dams, reopening a 60-kilometer stretch that had been blocked for over a century. They used the trapped sediment to rebuild riverbanks, helping nature recover quickly. Europe is advancing and restoring its rivers. In 2022, a record 325 dams and weirs were dismantled across the continent. 
Spain, Sweden, and France led these efforts, with countries like Latvia and Luxembourg contributing. Notably, 73% of these barriers were smaller structures, yet their removal made a significant difference in river flow. Restoring free-flowing rivers is vital for reversing biodiversity loss, one of the biggest threats we face. An inspiring example comes from Ukraine, where despite the ongoing conflict, the 120-year-old Bifa Dam on the Perkalaba River was dismantled. This opened up 27 kilometers of habitat for endangered species like the Danube salmon, potentially turning the area into a biodiversity hotspot in the Carpathians. These efforts mainly target older decaying structures. In Norway, for example, a century-old hydropower dam on the Tromsø River was demolished after local anglers campaigned for its removal. Across Europe, such projects are freeing up river kilometers, including the 60-kilometer restored after removing the La Rocaba Dam in France and Finland's efforts on the Lanana Sosi Dam, part of their largest river restoration to date. In 2022 alone, at least 832 kilometers of river pathways were reconnected. So what does this transformation cost? While hydropower remains a vital renewable energy source, many dams are at the end of their useful life. Europe has about 150,000 obsolete dams. A recent study estimates the average cost to remove a 10-meter high dam at 6.2 million. We're committed to releasing two videos a week. Like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more visionary builds.